it was it was quite weird. And it got weirder. Don McGlashan joined from scratch. Percussion discussion. I had no idea what I wanted to do, you know, and it's um it's sort of what you're supposed to that's what's supposed to happen when you're twenty. For a long time the answer was dance. Lim's dance company. And I actually found him quite irritating for a while. But then I the penny dropped and I realised that we were dealing with a major talent here. Sue Patterson. These days she's general manager at the Royal New Zealand Ballet. In the early 80s, she managed limbs. He composed his first piece for us and when he was 20, entering a shell for a piece by Mark Baldwin, and it was a great piece of music, amazing piece of music. And um, he kept composing music for dance for the next 10 years. And not just for dance. Don McGlashan began composing music for film and television. Terry and the Gun Runners. Mortimer's Patch, Other Halves, and more recently, Street Legal. It was a matter of virtually running down the complete film and playing the music live to the film as it went through. Producer Chris Bailey has worked with Don McGlashan for more than 20 years. And the thing that I've always admired uh, about Don is his ability to get right into the story in each particular episode um, and into the characters. By his early 20s, Don McGlashan was playing for limbs, from scratch, writing music for television, and Blam 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 had a couple of hits. He seemed to have it made. You know, I had people were coming up saying that, uh, you know, such and such was a good song and you're a good songwriter, and I just didn't believe it and buy it. I wanted to, I just really wanted to test um, what I could do and find out what I wanted to do as well. Don's answer, the traditional Kiwi migration. For him, it was Paris and New York. I travelled all over, all over Manhattan, um, you know, sitting in the backs of rooms with sort of impossibly beautiful dancers gyrating around and... And, uh, and fell in love with one. Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> uh, it, it took a long time to persuade her to come and live in New Zealand though. What do you think drives him? Well, maybe his Scottish background, Scottish Presbyterian type background, you know, that good old Protestant work ethic. I mean, he has got the most amazing energy of anybody I've ever met. Did you ever think, Don, why don't you just settle down and do one thing? Yep. Offer. So we buy, and we buy, and we buy, and we buy, and we buy the beautiful... Settle down? Don? Not likely. In New York, he'd started writing skits, and when he arrived back in God's Own, he joined Harry Sinclair on the front lawn. They just formed this incredible creative friendship. So they complemented each other? Totally. Especially with Harry with his sort of acting, filmmaking background, and Don with his music background. They were just a great team. Yeah, I know. Andy is a song from the front lawn. It's McGlashan at his melancholic best. Andy's just simply about my brother, you know, who wasn't called Andy, but um, I changed the name um, so that it wouldn't be too close, too close to me when I sang it, I suppose. I turned 28 last night still alive you'd be just short of 33 if only he could see your hometown Andy, don't keep your distance from me. Andy is about Don's brother Alec who drowned when he was 20 as soon as he starts playing, there's an atmosphere. And he really blew me away that night. He did Andy. Uh, uh, and there were a lot of people crying <laughs> in a theatre, and I love to see that. Moved, you know. But the front lawn was cut short when Harry Sinclair decided to make movies by himself. And I, and I just 
couldn't stand it. I mean, it's just, it just seemed like, you know, Rogers and Hammerstein, Rogers suddenly saying, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to write the next Rogers and Hammerstein song, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so I was really, really put out and behaved awfully badly for, for quite some time. Harry kept making movies and Don kept writing songs with the Martin Birds. Songs like Anchor Me. I realised it was a love song and what it was was a song asking someone to keep you in a state of peril. People would come up to us at gigs and they'd say, this is my fiancé and we just got engaged in the middle of Anchor Me because we said that's what we were going to do. It took the Mutton Bird's success first in New Zealand and then in Europe to convince Don what his fans already knew. He's good with the yarn, he's got a great sense of humour, very sharp and very self-effacing too, um, for no good reason. But then that's, that's an innate New Zealand character too, I think. If, if he'd been you know, taught by nuns or something, uh, caned relentlessly, he might have felt more sort of defiant and stood up and... So he eased into the whole thing and now he's up there with it, you know, under his own name, which I totally believe had to happen. Don McLashen still writing and singing songs like this new one, Miracle Sun, based on the story of Opo the Dolphin. Say he lets you go right up and touch him. They say he lets you ride on his back or surrender. For those of us that know him, he's quite a self-effacing guy and quite humble about himself and probably more comfortable in a group. And I think this is taking a lot of courage for him to get up there as Don McGlashan. Sean Donnelly. Tatiana Lanchakova. Thanks a lot. Good night. And Don McGlashan is now working on his first solo album to be released next year. We're back after the break.